Welcome to a very sunny, warm Saturday afternoon at Blaven Shukvir. Blaven Shukvir. My Danish is getting better. It's been a week. And um, I've come here to do a moonshot. So I have swatted up by re-watching the great Alan Wallace's moonshot tutorial video, where I think he was at Coldy Island. Um, trying to pick up some tips ready for tonight. I tried to plan it using photo pills. I was looking at where the moon was going to rise, where I needed to stand, how far away I need to stand. But I wildly miscalculated how far I actually needed to get back from this lighthouse to get it in frame at 400 mil. So I haven't got anything longer than 400. That's as, that's as long as I go. In the frame, I can just see it on the back of my camera there now. I've got it um, in portrait mode and I've pretty much just got the lighthouse in it. I haven't got anything else. I'd like to go further back and maybe do um, something in landscape, but the tide is on its way in. I think I'm standing where the tide's gonna be soon. And it's not until just gone half eight, 2035, which I think is in about an hour and a half, that the moon will rise from here, right behind the lighthouse. And I just want a big fat moon behind the lighthouse. That's what I'm looking to try and shoot here. Originally, I was somewhere just in the dunes there and I just couldn't get it in at all. I could literally just fit the, the, the lighthouse in frame at 135 mil and that just wouldn't give me a huge moon. I want a moon bazooka it. That's what I want to do. This is why I've come down here early to plan it out um, and make sure I'm in the right position for the right time because you've only got a matter of minutes once the, the moon's just coming over the horizon. So yeah, fingers crossed. All right, so let's take a little look at where I was. In the dunes, I was just next to this road here. So I'll put my orange pin where I'm going to be standing, and then the black pin is the subject, which I will put on Blavenshuk of Fir. So as you can see, I'm 336.1 meters away from my subject. What I didn't do before I got to the location was check my field of view. So let me just go back into the menu, select FOV, and I can input my camera, the focal length that I'm using, and also the subject distance. And at 336 meters, you can see my vertical field of view is 30.16 meters. Now, I've Googled the height of this lighthouse. It is 39 meters. So clearly, me standing in that position and trying to shoot the subject at 400 mil is not going to work. So, I had to move out of the dunes and onto the beach and I was standing somewhere around where this little line is here. Now, looking back, at the lighthouse, it is 558.9 meters away. So if I just update my subject distance in the field of view menu, you can see that now my vertical field of view is 50 meters at 400 mil, which is perfectly big enough to fit the lighthouse in and have a gap around the lighthouse as well. Now going back to the planner, I want to have a look at the timeline which I am moving at the bottom to see when and where the moon is going to rise. The solid cayenne blue line is where it will first rise and then the one that is moving is where it will rise relative to my position and at that time. As you can see the line is dotted and that means that the moon will still be behind the horizon relative to my position because I am lower down. And when it turns into a solid cayenne line, that's when the moon will actually come up above the horizon and I will be able to see it. As you can see, when it turns solid, it is on the right hand side of the lighthouse, which is not what I want. I want the moon to rise on the left hand side of the lighthouse and I can shoot the moon as it goes from left to right through the frame. So I'll just move my orange pin up slightly and you can see how precise this is. And when I zoom back in, I can see that the moon is now rising above the horizon 
relative to my position to the left of the lighthouse. After I'd finished planning where I was going to stand when the moon actually rose, I decided to take advantage of the soft light at golden hour to go take some other shots. This one has a wide, minimal central composition, a clear subject and a, a sense of depth with the blurred foreground. Although the sky was pretty boring at that time, could have utilised the light better on the foreground. So I travelled around the dunes that were there, trying to find different foregrounds to put in a composition with the main subject here, which is obviously the lighthouse. And I found this little path. There wasn't many leading lines, paths that were going directly up there that looked amazing. This was the best one that I could find. I really tried to bring it out in the edit, but it's, it's not amazing. But I've got a clear subject, soft light, but a boring sky, and it was heavily cropped. So it's T minus about 10 minutes until moonrise. I'm pretty excited. I mean, I wish I was taking photos that way, but I'm just focusing in now on trying to get the moon up behind the lighthouse. It's a beautiful sunset, so I'm having a nice local beer called Laid Back. I'm anything but laid back right now. I hope I'm in the right position. I've repinned myself on photo pills. It should just be coming up there in 10 minutes time. I could move a bit further back because actually the tide was going out and um, yeah I've got a lot more not more space to work with so I can go up to 400 mil hopefully and get a, the biggest moon I could possibly get given my uh, my personal length so yeah I'm, I'm gonna hop around I've got I've got a few minutes hopefully <laughs> Ooh, ooh, yeah, baby! I'm locked in, I'm locked in. I've been running around the beach. I did run around and carrying a beer and everything, but the moon's coming. The moon is coming up, baby. I literally just turned around and just started rising. Oh, yes, 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 and yes. I'm so glad the tide is going out. Oh, it just looks magnificent. I love it when a plan comes together. Ooh, yeah! Moonrise. Okay, so I hadn't planned for how giddy I would be about <laughs> this moonshot. I've wanted to do one for such a long time. And uh, just, oh, didn't that sound good? Just the shutter going, because oh, it's just coming out the other side now. There's a couple of telegraph poles on the left. Um, I don't know, can you see this? There we go, okay, yeah, but it's just coming out the right-hand side now. And, oh, it's peaking. I'm just, I'm just, I've just got the shutter release because I don't want to um, give too much vibration into the tripod or the camera um, with such a long lens on there and probably not properly fixed on either. My mate Stuttard will tell me to get a collar to go around that. <laughs> he already has done. I haven't listened. Um, so I'm just, I'm just clicking, uh, I'm in awe, absolute awe watching this moon come up right now. It looks like I could eat it. Oh, uh, this is, this is epic. Now the moon's on the right hand side. What I can do is Photoshop out those telegraph poles on the left and clean it up. I'm just gonna leave it in portrait. I had a couple as it came up in landscape and I, it's, I think it works a little bit better in portrait being a tall building the composition looks better like that and now the whole moon has come out the other side it's just this is how quick it goes literally i had half moon out the side when i started recording and now i've got the full moon and look there it is uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll show you the photos it's click it oh i'm so happy i'm gonna do the photograph dance and soon five more minutes and that moon will be out of the frame but it's just so yellow against this blue background with a white huge obelisk of a lighthouse all i need now is for the lighthouse just to turn its lights on but i don't think that's going to happen in the next five minutes if it does i'll have to change my underwear They've only got to turn the lighthouse on. <laughs> yeah, baby! I'm definitely going to need a change of underpants now because this is ridiculous. I am just shifting myself down the beach to the left a bit as the moon rises. It's, it's about the same height now as the 
sorry, put this thing away, as the top of the lighthouse. <coughs> and I'm just keeping on shifting down. I brought a spare battery, which clearly I hadn't charged. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, it's right behind the top. Oh yes, oh yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you are just gonna have to wait, guys, as I line this up. And then, baby, this is great, I gotta go. As it turned out, I didn't actually end up filming any more vlog that evening as I was running down the beach to try and capture as many shots as I could as the moon rose fairly quickly around that lighthouse. This first shot, I put together a stack of multiple photos as the moon rose and those moon colours are just fantastic. I've got those people in there for scale at the bottom also watching the moon rise as well. I also added in the lighthouse that was lit up because I just felt that added to the atmosphere of the shot. This second photo lined up perfectly and it's a very, very minimal, simple composition of the lit up lighthouse with the moon directly above it. And luckily, there was some mist or cloud in the sky that was being backlit by the moon. And this, is, this isn't edited in afterwards. That mist was there that evening and it was fantastic. But that last photo didn't have anything on the bottom to ground the actual subject. So I took this second shot in a portrait mode to try and bring in some of that foreground. And I think it looks a little bit better. The mist on that particular shot was getting a bit more, but I had to exposure bracket as it was getting dark at this point. The maximum shutter speed you want to photograph the moon is about 1 125th of a second, which meant I had to both open up my aperture to 5.6, which was its maximum, and also I had to push the ISO, which was I didn't really want to do it, but I had to, to get the shutter speed to capture the moon on the dark shot. And then I could use a longer shutter speed to capture more light for the, for the subject and the foreground. I'm afraid that's it for today's video. However, I did visit a lot more places in Denmark. So if you liked what you saw today, please give it a like, give it a subscribe so you get notifications when my next photographing Denmark videos are available. As always, thanks for watching and happy snapping.